Hello everyone, I hope you're all doing very well. Today we're in the C101CC and we're looking at bombing. First, let's look at the bombs. Armament screen, we can have bombs on pylons 6, 5, 3 and 2. Outer pylons first, bombs. Bin 200, this is an incendiary bomb. This may be similar to napalm, we're not sure, I can't get the extra detail, but incendiary bomb. BL755, this is a cluster bomb. BR250, general purpose 250 kilo bomb. Slick, unguided. Beluga, we all know from the Mirage module in DCS as a cluster bomb. Fab 12050, 12050 kilo, slick, unguided bombs. Mark 82, general purpose, 500 pound, slick, unguided bombs. And on the inner pylons, we can have, we have the addition of the BR500 and four times BDU-33 small training smoke bombs on a single rack. Just to keep things super simple, because why not, we're going to stick a Mark 82 on all four pylons. Remember, if we're going to arm up, we need to set the radio to intercom. So this knob here, if you can see it on the bottom right, I'm going to right click until we're at intercom. And this is a hot started vehicle we're in here. Okay, arm up. Request rearming. Now let's look at our setup. So our fixed weapon switch, we're going to make sure is in air to ground, which is the lower selection. So down. Master arm is going to go on with right mouse button. You can see that we have stores on that pylon, that pylon, that pylon, that pylon. We can use a maximum of two pylons at a time, either those two pylons or those two pylons. So we'll do the outer pylons to begin with. I think we can also do singles, but in this case I'm going to do both. Armament of the bomb off, nose and tail, nose fuse, tail fuse. I'm just going to go for nose and tail. Master mode, do we want it in single bomb release, which will pulse the selected stations at the same time, so that one and that one at the same time in this case, or ripple, where you can push and hold the release button and impulses will be sent to each bomb with an interval of this in milliseconds, 70 milliseconds, 90 milliseconds, 100, 100 and 200 milliseconds, so we can create a ripple of one falling after the other. Note, this only works if you have multiple bombs on each pylon. It will not work, for instance, if you wanted to ripple four Mark 82 bombs like that. It's not designed to do that in this aircraft. Only multiple bombs on a single pylon. So we're going to go up there. We do also have BM bombs mixed here for mixed loadouts. We're going to stick with bomb here. Quickly check the bomb status. So we can see we've got these two bombs armed and ready. The bombs are armed and there is no red error. So we're good to drop. Next, our gun sight gun sight on manual mode let's set the depression we've got one type of bombing in this aircraft it is manual bombing mode it means we have to work to a depression table let's bring up the depression table for the mark 82 from the user manual we need to choose a table so if we choose the third one which is set up for mark 82 slick bombs 300 knots kias with a dive attitude of minus 30 degrees. We then choose our height. Let's just say 1,000 feet. So that means radar altitude 1,000 feet from the ground drop. Next, our depression angle, if we come across to the right, is 70 milliradians. So that means if we choose 70 milliradians, and let me do that now, that if we dive at the target at 300 knots in our speedo at a depression angle of minus 30 degrees which we can see here through our ADI and release at 1000 feet which we will see here with our radio altimeter then that bomb will be on target assuming we have the reticle which is just this little guy here on the target so let's power on the radio altimeter make sure we don't forget to do that right click there the radio altimeter will not kick in until 2000 feet AGL buttons to release are that guy there to open the guard for the release and to actually release the bombs stores release button push and hold so let's go and drop the first two bombs i suggest diving in from at least 6,000 feet agl speed essentially as high as you can get it before you go into the dive it's a very slow plane obviously you won't be able to get get it over about 250 knots with stores on the dive it's actually important to not over speed because in the dive she'll happily over speed and you'll get problems once you uh, get over 300 knots make sure you get a decent run up so you're a good three plus miles away laterally from the target the technique i'm going to move towards the target which is just on the left hand of the runway i want to be able to view the target out of my right quarter or left quarter depending which way you want ingress i want to kind of see it 
in this area here allows me to get close to the target while being able to see it so that I can do my 30 degree dive. I'm going to trim down heavily because the trim will be very heavily changed once we get to 300 knots. Okay, six and a half thousand feet, so anything above six thousand feet I would suggest. Moving towards target, tally targets, some bunches of APCs or whatever they are before those aeroplanes. Okay, I think we're ready to roll in. First thing I'm going to do is unsafe the trigger as we saw earlier. Uh, unsafe. Quickly check there, you can see that the safety guard's gone. Rolling in on target. I'm going to try and achieve our attitude. We're going to go off the power a little. Choose our target. Okay. I'm going to go, I think, for these guys here. Just get the reticle on them, a little bit of down trim, a stop, and let's just have a little think. First things first, we've got too far, so off the throttle, air brake on in this case. Let's try and get some speed out of this. We are at exactly 30 degrees dive, which is pretty much bang on. We're going to aim the reticle at a base uh, of that vehicle group there. I'm going to wait until our rad out here shows 1,000 feet to the actual drop, as close as we can dare get to that. Press the stores button, pull away, and that should be us done. So, off the power, air brake on, let's try and scrub some of this speed off. Wait for the altimeter. Drop, pull. Hopefully, I'm not going to die. Slightly long there, you can see we're about 50 feet long, and I'm pretty sure I was about 350 knots by the time I was dropped that. It's really hard. One of the hardest things to do in this is keeping the plane slow enough, actually. You won't believe it with this plane, but in a dive, it just picks up speed. Uh, so let's go and do that again and see if we can get a bit more precise. Yeah, you can see I'm still over 300 knots there. So around we go again. Air brake up. I'm going to go out a good five miles, get up to 6,000 feet plus, and try again. Now deselect the used pylons, reselect the new pylons, check we've got no errors, everything's good, in we go. We're going for the other side this time, so we're going to position the target in that quarter. We're going to go in a little slower this time because uh, yeah, I'm going to make that dive in. Come off the throttle a little. I'm going to adjust the fly accordingly to get my 30 degrees. You can see I'm not going to make my 30 degrees, I don't think, so what I'm going to do is fly past the target slightly to adjust. Watch the speed, watch the speed, watch the speed. Okay, that should just about get my 30 degrees. There. So, I'm coming up to 300 knots, so I should be able to keep under this time with no gas. I'm slightly off my 30 degrees, but I think it should be accurate enough. Again, uh, I'm going to watch for my radar altimeter. A bit more accurate this time. Wait for the altimeter and drop slightly early, but I think we'll be okay. There, I got it. That time we were just more accurate. I mean, you can see there, look, exactly 300 knots on the dot. And I, in the end, adjusted. I, th I think I was near enough exact 30 degrees there. And this time I really got it on a thousand. Not easy, takes lots of practice. You can drop lower if you want, but I wouldn't do it unless you had time fuse bombs because you're going to end up just blowing your own aircraft up. That's the functionality for the C101CC bombing at the moment, May 2020. Hope that was useful and see you later.